Good morning and welcome to our, our service at Beaumaris Mordialic Baptist Church today. Welcome to those who are here in person and welcome to those of you who will be listening later today. Our theme for today is mercy and our question for those who are on live chat is, why do you think mercy is so important in life and faith? So for those watching later today, please share your thoughts on live chat with those who are also watching. We've heard the word mercy many times, but how well do we understand what it means? I thought I'd better have a check, so I went online and looked up a couple of definitions and something that came through very clearly is that mercy is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. Some of you will have studied William Shakespeare's play, The Merchant of Venice, when at school. And mercy features a lot in this play. You may recall that a young woman, Portia, disguises herself as a lawyer and pleads with the plaintiff, Shylock, to show mercy to someone who has fallen within his power. She says the famous lines, the quality of mercy is not strained. Strained meaning constrained. In other words, you don't have to give mercy. Shylock didn't in that case. Um, it, the quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. Mercy is not just a one-way thing because both the giver and the receiver are blessed. We are now going to sing a song which will be run through our audio-visual system and please join in with us. Touching every heart 
stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Well, isn't it wonderful to have a God who makes a way for us, a God who shines light into our darkness, who keeps his promises, who works miracles, who mends hearts. A new song to you, but a song with, the, uh, with, with, with some great uh, truths and some great promises about who God is. Good morning to those on site, good afternoon and good, uh, good evening or whatever time you're watching online. It's great to have you what a uh, great to have you joining with us today as part of the Bo Morris Mordialic Baptist Church community. And uh, whether you're here for the first time or whether you're a regular, we, uh, we're so glad that you've joined with us. It's great to have restrictions are gradually easing uh, here in Melbourne, even if not the case in uh, some other parts of the country, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, that means that our on-site service invite system is no longer needed in, in the way that we've uh, uh, been having it over, um, uh, over the weeks gone by. And we're working towards um, resuming in COVID safe ways uh, all of our on-site ministries. In, uh, in different shapes and forms. Um, our coffee and morning tea ministry, uh, we're working towards uh, resetting that, restarting that in, the, in two weeks time, Sunday 25th of July. Uh, school holidays still on at the moment, but, uh, but, but in a couple of weeks time, Sunday 25th of July, uh, we will resume uh, all being well. It is our intent to resume our, our on-site coffee ministry and morning tea ministry. It is also our intent to resume our on-site children's programs uh, on, on Sunday uh, 25th of July in two weeks times as well. So all the, uh, all the preparations are, are being put in place behind the scenes uh, to again adapt in COVID safe ways to press the reset button on those things. Uh, great to have Pastor uh, Tom and Taylor back this week after, after a, a week and a bit off. Pastor Andy is still on leave in New Zealand. Um, and uh, so um, uh, there's just an update for you there. Thank you for your ongoing uh, support of God's work in, in different ways, through prayer, 
Um, I, I know that there are those of you who are not able to join with us on site, uh, but, but you're praying and, uh, and uh, we're grateful for your prayers. Uh, we're grateful for those who give of their time. We're grateful for, uh, for, for the way that uh, you can support God's work through giving as well. So uh, let's just pause and pray as uh, we acknowledge uh, the gifts that uh, we give back to God. God, you give us breath. You give us life. You give us everything we have. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, important to just uh, pause and, and remind ourselves of this. It's important to just uh, regain, the, uh, 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 remind ourselves of, of your perspective on life, that all that we have has come from you. Help us to be grateful. Help us to be good stewards. Help us to be generous. Help us to be glad and, and joyful. The, the Lord loves a cheerful or joyful giver. And so, God, um, uh, in, the, in the midst of the, the different situations, circumstances that we, we might be in, help us to be all of these things, grateful, good stewards, generous and glad. And uh, so we, we would ask uh, and pray that um, the gifts and offerings given uh, online um, or, or, um, or in other ways would be uh, used wisely and well in uh, extending your kingdom work. And we ask all these things in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're on site and uh, you uh, uh, have uh, children, uh, kids and school holidays, kids packs are, uh, are available uh, out in the foyer. Um, but uh, now I'm going to hand over to, uh, to Judy and uh, Judy's uh, going to um, uh, bring us uh, today's Bible reading and then lead us in prayer. Thank you, Judy. So our Bible reading today comes from the book of the prophet Micah. We're reading from chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy. This is the word of the Lord. We're going to pray together, so please join me in prayer. Be exalted, Lord, above the heavens. Let your glory cover the earth. Keep our nation under your care and guide us in justice and truth. Let your way be known on earth, your saving power among the nations. Send out your light and your truth that we may tell of your saving works. We want to thank you for your unfailing love for us, your blessings and goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness to guide us and see us through times of uncertainty, for lifting us up and setting us on high. Thank you for scripture that comforts and reminds us of your promises, your plan and provision. Thank you for taking away our fears and worries, the what ifs, and reminding us that our help comes from you. Help us to be good stewards of all you've given us, and to sow wisely. We want to lay before you all that weighs heavily on our hearts, reveal even the sins we are not aware of. We lay these at your feet and ask for your forgiveness. We believe you when you say that you wash us whiter than snow. Thank you for your unending love for us. Help us to start afresh right now to make choices that honor you. Father, sometimes it does feel that you've left us in the battle. We know that you are with us, but so are our feelings of aloneness at times. The enemy seems to be taking ground, and our crying out to you seems to go unanswered. But we know you are at work. Help us to trust you in the midst of our questions. Lord, help us to let go of our fear of failure, which holds us back from living boldly for you. Forgive us for not living in faith and help us from this moment on to live with bold confidence in you. Help us not to compare ourselves to others around us, but instead keep our eyes on you 
and live a life that proclaims your excellence. We pray for all countries deeply affected by COVID-19, asking for your mercy on those in distress. We pray for protection of medical staff who risk their lives daily to help others. We ask that vaccines and much needed supplies will become available and that people will behave responsibly, complying with COVID restrictions. Closer to home, we ask that the New South Wales outbreak be able to be brought under control. We pray for grieving families who have lost people they love, and we especially think of those in the recent factory fire in Bangladesh. We pray too for the Widows Project in Bangladesh that provides food and help for so many who are in dire straits, and for Chrissy's family who mourn the recent death of her uncle who supported this project. We ask for your comfort and healing of all those within our congregation who are ill, in pain, or dealing with long-term illness. We also lift up those who seek to serve. We think of Anthony and Jackie in Fiji, Matt and Shannon in Central Australia, our sports chaplains, and those involved in the plans to modify Wilson House so that the homeless will have somewhere to shower and wash clothes. We ask for your blessing on their efforts. As we close, we use the prayer of Sir Richard of Chichester. Dear Lord, these three things I pray, to see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly day by day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Judy. Well, uh, the lenses, I've, I've spoken about the glasses that I wear uh, some time ago. Oh, time's a bit of a blur, it might be months ago, years ago, I can't, I can't remember. But uh, the lenses that were prescribed for me but at my last eye checkup, whenever that was, and that I look through, not just today, but that I look through every day, uh, what's known as trifocals. I wish they weren't trifocals. I, uh, I found it hard to believe that I had to have trifocals. But that basically means they have three different dimensions to them. And I'll come back to those three dimensions later on. But across the three weeks of last week, this week and next week, as part of our Holy Habits series, we are looking from Micah chapter 6, verse 8, at three different aspects of what God has calls us to in life. And uh, they are three holy habits to make a part of our lives. And uh, no, uh, it is not a mistake. This week's Bible reading is the same as last week's Bible reading. And next week will be the same because there are three different elements in, uh, in this reading that we're focusing on one week at a time. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8, particularly where it says, He has shown, he has shown you, O mortal or man or woman, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Andy uh, spoke last week, uh, uh, spoke on, on acting justly, and uh, g gave a, a, a terrific outline of, of what, that, um, uh, what, what that might look like for us. And we come this morning to love mercy, and next week we'll focus on the holy habit of walking humbly with your God. It, it says here, this is what God has shown us is good, and more than that, God not only calls us to, but God commands us in these things. What the Lord requires of you, it says. It doesn't say what the Lord thinks you should do. It says what the Lord requires of you. It's an essential as far as God is concerned, which is to what, as we focus on this morning, to love mercy. Just two words. Love mercy. Can't be that difficult, can it? Love mercy. But two, two words with a lot to them that we're going to look closer at today. Love, mercy. To love something or to love someone is much more than a feeling or an emotion. It's, in, it's a commitment to something or someone. And here it's a doing word, it's a verb. So to love mercy is to be committed to mercy. It is, it is to be committed to mercy not just as a principle but to mercy in practice. And to not just demonstrate mercy because God says we ought to, but because we want to. Love mercy, God says here. Love is not an obligation grudgingly given because we should, but it's, it's, given out of something because it's given as something we want to do because it's important to us. So what is it we are called to love? 
We are called to love mercy. What is mercy? Well, Judy uh, outlined it at, uh, uh, in the opening to our service today a little bit of that, which was terrific. But Bible mercy, as the Bible speaks of it, is a love that responds to human need in what kind of ways? In unexpected ways, in undeserving ways, and in unlimited ways. Unexpected, undeserving, and unlimited. It's a mercy that is ultimately found in God, but that when it is, will flow out into our lives so that as we live life, we will live life looking through the lens of mercy. Everyone needs mercy in life. I need mercy. You need mercy. Everyone needs mercy in life. Why? Because everyone messes up. I I mess up. You mess up. We all mess up. The Bible puts it this way in in Romans chapter 3, verse uh, verse 23. And uh, it's it's a verse that... um, some of you would know well, but, but essentially it's a verse about mercy as well as about sin. It, it says, for, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we all miss the mark. Every one of us has fallen short of God's expectations for us. And perhaps we fall short of our own expectations of ourselves. Perhaps we fall short of others' expectations of us. But we certainly fall short of God's expectations for us. And not just as a once-off either. We all continue to live in ways that miss the mark when it comes to God's ways for us. God's people long ago, when uh, Micah first wrote these words, did. And we still do today. And God calls us back to loving mercy. In fact, if we, didn't love, if, we didn't love, if we don't love mercy, God is saying here, we are missing the mark of what God is looking for. If we don't love mercy, we, we are actually sinning. If we don't love mercy, we, uh, we, we, we are missing the point. God says here, uh, it says here in Micah, God is looking for mercy more than he's looking for sacrifice, more than he's looking for offerings. And the verses before here in Micah uh, chapter 6 make that uh, abundantly clear. As you look at the, uh, the, the verses that come immediately before, the verses that lead in, in verses 6 and 7, and it's always important to see what comes before. Verse 6 and 7, as, as Judy read, With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, so with calves a year old? So it's talking about offerings. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, offering after offering, 10,000 rivers of olive oil? So it keeps going up and up. Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? So the ultimate in offerings, the ultimate in sacrifices. But God says, more than that, I look for mercy. For you to love mercy, as well as acting justly, and as well as walking humbly with me. And uh, Jesus certainly uh, reiterates that uh, as uh, as you get into the in, into the New Testament and look at the Gospels. It's abundantly clear as Jesus in the Matthew chapter nine, uh, verse thirteen, he says, "But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I desire mercy." more than sacrifice. To love mercy begins, though, with loving the mercy that God has shown us. He has showed you what is good, it says here in Micah. God has shown and continues to show us all mercy in our lives. And one of the ways that that is uh, described uh, memorably, that uh, that, that many people um, uh, are, are very familiar with, uh, is in the book of uh, from the Bible is in the book of Lamentations. Lamentations chapter three, verse twenty two and twenty three says this: Because of the Lord's great love, or His mercy, we are not consumed. It's steadfast love. It's the in the original language. It, it's the word uh, hesed, which means a steadfast, a steadfast, loyal love that, that that goes on and on and on, whether we're loyal or not. For his compassions never fail. They are new and his mercies is, 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 a word, is the word uh, very closely linked to compassions here. His mercies never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And the thinking of the original language, the word in the original Hebrew language here for new, when it says his mercies or his compassions are new every morning, the word in the original language means never before experienced. I want you to think about that with me for a moment. That means 
that the mercy that God shows us today is a mercy we've never before experienced in exactly the same way. It's a mercy for today. It's not just a mercy for yesterday, but it's a mercy for today. And day after day, morning after morning, God's mercies are like that. They're new every day. They're fresh every day. They're like we've never experienced before, day after day after day, morning after morning after morning. There have been plenty of days in my life already, and when I did the sums, I realised that I'm approaching, it's getting closer than I would like it to be, but I'm approaching 20,000 days <laughs> in my life, which means nearly 20,000 days of new mercies that God has shown me. You can do the sums if you really want. You can do them on your own life, or if you really want to work out my age, you can do, <laughs> you can do them on my life. But the real point is this. Loving mercy begins with loving the mercy that God shows us. And that God continues to show us time after time, day after day, morning after morning in our lives. But it's not just in Lamentations and Micah in the Old Testament that we discover the mercy of God. The mercy of God is found most of all in, in, in Jesus. God's mercy is weaved right through the Bible from beginning to end, clearest of all in the life and ministry of God's son Jesus as he related to and responded to people. As, as he related to, to uh, all kinds of people, to people that others wouldn't, wouldn't relate to. People said, they don't deserve this. Jesus, Jesus showed them mercy. People, people turned the other way. Jesus showed them mercy. Over and over again. It's, undes it's unbelievable mercy. It's undeserved mercy. It's unexpected mercy. It's unlimited mercy through the life of Jesus. And then as we think of our lives, God's mercy is weaved right through our lives too, from beginning to end. God's mercy that he shows to me and God's mercy that he shows to you is unbelievable mercy. It's undeserved mercy, it's unlimited mercy, and it's unexpected mercy. If it were not for God's mercy through, shown to us through Jesus, things would be very different for us in every way. Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians, we, we read this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgression, it is by grace you have been saved. Friends, loving mercy begins with realising how much I need the mercy of God shown to me. And then loving the way that God has shown and continues to show it to me. But there's another side of the coin of loving mercy as well in the light of that, and that is to then show mercy to others and to love doing it, to not just do it because we should, to not just do it because, uh, because we, we like it, but to do it because we love mercy. Having experienced God being rich in mercy towards us, we are called to be rich in mercy towards others, to be merciful towards others. Luke uh, chapter 6 Verse 36, Jesus puts it clearly. He says, be merciful just as your Father in heaven is merciful. Be merciful just as your Father in heaven is merciful. Now, sometimes uh, I bump into something in life. Uh, sometimes it's in the middle of the night when I get up. Sometimes it's, it can happen at other times too. Uh, and, and when I do, if I bump into something that's got a rough edge, you know about it. Rough edges on anything can do all kinds of damage. But rough edges on people and rough edges on any of us that are harsh, rough, edge, rough edges on any of us that are judgmental, rough edges on us that are legalistic, rough edges on us that are impatient, rough edges on us that are, that are unforgiving instead of merciful edges can do all kinds of damage too. As others relate to you, and as you relate to others, what kind of edges are there on you? Are they edges that love to show mercy? Sadly, the reality is that there are many people who, who, who have actually turned away from the church. And there are many people that have, that have turned away even from God because they haven't been shown mercy. The edges, the, the, the edges, the, the, the edges that, that they've been shown 
are the very opposite of what Jesus calls us to. Are our edges sharp and abrasive or are our edges merciful? Sadly, God's people had lost sight of loving to show mercy when Micah first wrote these words. And the Pharisees and others who was very zealous about following God's ways had lost sight of loving to show mercy when Jesus said these words in Luke as well. Be merciful just as your heavenly Father is, is merciful. One of the, 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 the greatest things that Jesus challenged people about when he walked on earth was their lack of mercy. Any of us too, if we're not careful, can lose sight of loving to show mercy to others. It's easy for our hearts to harden. It's easy for our minds to judge. It's easy for our words to, to wound. Jesus said it's easy for our actions to, to have the wrong kind of edge to them instead of a merciful edge. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, Jesus, in, as part of the Beatitudes, says this, Blessed, he, he talks about a whole lot of uh, uh, situations in which people are blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed, uh, etc. Et but about midway through the Beatitudes, he says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. So it seems to directly link that uh, God's mercy being shown to us with the mercy that we show to others, but the mercy that we show to others also in this cycle back round, uh, if, if, if we're not merciful to others, it seems to indicate that, uh, that, that, that we are, are before God uh, really not, not going to be who God has called us to be. Then James goes on to say this in, in James chapter 2, verse 13. Judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Strong words, but these are God's words. Judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What a, be what a beautiful thing. That mercy triumphs over judgment. What a beautiful thing that mercy triumphs over judgment in the way that God looks at me and that God looks at you. What a beautiful thing that mercy triumphs over judgment in God's bigger picture purposes. So as I close today, let me come back to what I began with. The trifocal lenses that I look through, which are the lenses of what is near, what is intermediate and what is further away. And I want to ask you as I close, who is someone near to you that God may, might be calling you afresh to respond to with mercy? It might be a spouse, might be a child, might be a family member, might, but, but, but someone that, that, that is, that is relatively, relatively near to you in, 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 your, in your life uh, situation, your life experience, that, uh, uh, that perhaps are not always easy to show mercy to. How, how, how is God calling you afresh to respond with mercy to someone near to you? And then your intermediate sphere of influence that God may be calling you to show mercy afresh in. To someone in the church family, perhaps someone you work with, a neighbour, etc., etc. And finally, how about someone more in the distance when it comes to the level of relationship you have with them. They may be someone you hardly know, someone very different to you, and yet someone you are nevertheless called to extend mercy towards. Let's take some moments now to come before our merciful God in prayerful reflection, to, bring, to allow God's Spirit to, to speak into our hearts, to bring to our minds what it might look like this day, this week, to love mercy to allow God's spirit to soften our hearts afresh where they may need softening so that we discover more of what it means to be his people, more of what it means to be people who love mercy. Let's pray. Merciful God, we come afresh before you now to receive your mercy for where we've missed the mark, for where we've missed the point, for where we've lost perspective of your will and your ways for us. And we can think that, 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 that no, that's not us, but that's what, that's what God's people thought long ago. That's what, uh, uh, that, that's what those who were zealous about following God's, God's ways when Jesus walked on earth thought. 
We need your mercy. We never come to a point where we don't need your mercy. We need it morning after morning, day after day. And God, in some ways, your your mercy is unfathomable. It is beyond our capacity to fully take it in. Yet, may may we come to love your mercy. Love the richness of your mercy shown towards us. Bring us back to, 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 uh, to bask in the light of your mercy, to take in your mercy, to be so grateful for your mercy, to not take for granted your mercy. And show us more of what it means to love showing mercy to others as well. Forgive us where we have not done that. Forgive us where our rough edges might have been more evident than our merciful edges. Break down our hearts where they may be hard. Break down our minds where they may be, um, uh, where, where, where they may be um, not as they could be. Break down our actions where they may be harsh so that we may see and live through the lenses of mercy. And as we think of someone near, as we think of someone in our intermediate sphere of relationships, as we think of someone further away, bring to our hearts and our minds one or more people that you are calling us to love showing mercy to. God, we... We are who we are because of you. We are where we are because of you. Continue to lead us into more of what it means to find and follow you through loving mercy, loving your mercy shown to us and then loving, showing mercy to others. And we ask these things in and through the beautiful, wonderful name of Jesus in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, I invite you to respond in worship now, to stand for the, uh, the songs we sing, or, or to, to, to join in, or simply reflect on the words. Changes.
Thank you for your message, David. And I wonder what opportunities each of us will have during this week to show mercy. And maybe recognize the opportunities when they happen. So thank you for being part of our church family this morning. Remember if you're battling with a problem or would you like, if you'd like someone to pray with you, we do have uh, somebody who will be up front and happy to pray with you. Um, if you need to contact a member of our pastoral team, contact details are available on our website. And we also have some members of our pastoral team here this morning. So please feel free to talk to them. So let us close with a benediction. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen.